What's up guys, Alvaro here with Particle School and in this tutorial I'll show you how to create some brain pattern and you can grow this brain pattern on any kind of surface and on the second part of the tutorial I'll show you how to create some veins on this brain so it can get more realistic something that I really recommend you to do in Particle Flow is to keep things simple just keep things as simple as you can. So here in this case, let's start the brain pattern with a plane and then we can use the same setup to build com more complex things. Uh, so I have a plane here, it have the one for 140 units on the generic units. And let's press six to open the particle view. Nope. Let's just bring it back to 140. Okay. And let's drag a standard flow here. I'll press Ctrl X to enter on the expert mode. And here, let's burn the 200 particles on the first frame. Um, the quantity multiplier, let's show it 100% and let's change the render to frame as well, just like the viewport, the integration step field. So now let's change. I don't want this position icon. I want a position object. So let's replace it. And let's add the plane here in the position object. Now I want to change this speed to a slower speed like 50. And let's change it to random 3D. I don't want any rotation and the shape, I want it to be a sphere 20 sides. So now let's show the geometry and let's scroll the, tra the, the timeline to see what's going on. So the particles are just going in all directions. Now let's lock these particles to the, to the plane using a lock bond. Just put the lock bond below everything so it just keep locked. And let's add the plane here. Let's change it to lock to surface. And let's check this option, restrict to surface. This way the particles will be locked on this surface and it will be restricted to the surface so it stays in the surface and with z zero force here on the position lock bond. So it can run freely on the surface. And just in case, let's switch the rotation lock bond as well to zero so it doesn't get locked in any way. Okay, now the particles are going running freely, traveling freely on this object surface, but they are kinda intersecting each other. So here, I know that the size of my particles are 10. So here on the position object, let's get rid of the description. And let's check the separation field and let's change it to 15, like something a bit more than our particle's shape. And we still have some intersection here. So let's just increase the attempt to a thousand and I think it's fine now. If you want it, you can increase it a bit more, but I think it's okay like this. Maybe we can decrease this amount here. Let's try 150. And yeah, it's fine like this. Now let's make these particles to create a trail from where it's traveling. So I will add a spawn below everything and change here to by travel distance. Now, uh, and I want to send these spawned particles to a new event and this event just have a display and it's an event so we need we don't need anything now here and I want those spawned particles to inherit none of its speed with no divergence just to keep it simple now check it out it's like this now we will have to make those particles here try not to intersect each other. Like, like, let's focus on this one here. It's intersecting this one here, this line here, and then it's intersecting this line here. 
So to avoid this, let's use the keep apart operator and just make sure you put it on top of the lock bond, not below it. And let's uncheck the acceleration limit and check the speed limit. And let's make this speed mm, very low, like 20 maybe. And now we have to check to say that those particles must keep apart from the second event. Let's call the second event brain pattern because the pattern will be generated here. So just select this option and select check the brain pattern. Now check it out. We have these options here, absolute size. We could use rela relative to particle size, but just to keep it simple, again, let's use this one. Since we know that our particles have a size of 10, you have to notice that it's not a radius of 10. So a radius of 10 will be the double of its size. And the core radius is kind of bigger like this. And the fall off, it's even bigger, like the double. So what, what happens here is that the core radius will apply a force of 100 in the particles that keep uh, try to keep from this distance from the from the, the car the center of the particles and the fall off will apply a kind of gradient force like in the tip of the fall off radius it will be a force of zero and it will be increasing to the core of it so in this in the minimum limit of this the force will be like 100 so let's keep it zero for now and let's see what happens. So it's really hard to make these particles stop intersecting, but let's try to avoid the maximum as we can. So I'll look on top of you and I'll drag the timeline. See, now we're having like a interesting shape, but if we increase this fall off here to one, it will look much better. See, what we really want is those uh, areas without any particles. And that's what will form the brain pattern. So yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much what we need. So let's add a cache operator here on top of everything so we can go back and forth with our timeline. And here in the cache operator, just put a couple more of zeros in the end and press enter and the, it will give you the maximum amount that your computer can have of this memory. And check it out, now you can do it easily. Great. Now I'll cancel the expert mode and I'll create a Thinkbox Frost. You can try it with maybe V-Ray Metaball or even the Blob Mesh, but Frost is much better, it's easier and it's faster, so I really prefer it. Um, now here in the Particles object, you can just add your Particle Flow Source. And let's hide here the Brain Pattern and the Brain Geometry. Now I want to keep it selected, but I don't really want to see those faces. So you just click here on realistic configure and check, check tick off the display selected with edge faces. Now it's selected and I can see the mesh better. So there, let's keep the union of spheres. And in this case, the radius of five is fine. If your particles have a different size, you can use the radius channel. But in this case, I don't really need it. I just want to keep it simple, as simple as I can. And here in the resolution, I will increase it a lot, like six maybe. And it's looking much better now. But it can get much better. So just bring your timeline back and find, uh, have, just check it out. 
here you have some great brain pattern but there's a lot of unfilled holes but if you let those holes to be filled to the end the pattern starts losing its shape so let's just find some part that the shape's looking good and just don't mind about these holes for now and in 60 it looks fine so let's keep it like this for a while and let's add on top of the frost let's add a push modifier and this push value can be something like one yeah one's fine see now it looks really cool but you have those artifacts here but you can get rid of it with a relax modifier very easily one of value here see now we have our brain pattern already and a great way to get rid of those holes those holes here is with some splines so check it out i will get a spline and i'll just draw something out of our brain pattern and here just select the the frost and on the base here of the frost you can add this spline here with your particle flow source and it will create a meta ball right on the every vertex so let's delete this one for now uh, let's remove it from here and let's just add here some splines so you can click here and here here and here mm, maybe here and here and if you have a mesh that it's not a plane like a sphere or a brain base you can use the can right click here on the snap and use the face option so you can draw your lines on the on the object surface just take care not to draw the the lines on top of the brain pattern so now it looks i think it looks fine i will just select the last line and add all the other lines here with the attach mulch and here i will add the the line see it just filled the holes so yeah that's looking fine now so let's make it more complex and you can make it on all kinds of surface but i will delete this plane and i will unhide a brain base that i created so i just model this base and i will create the pattern around this brain so i just deleted the plane and now here on my particle flow source i will add the the brain base here on the position object and here in the lock bond I'll remove the old one and add it here now let's reset this and the frost will not get updated until you run the timeline so now here on frost let's just delete this line and we can delete it from our scene as well for a while let's hide the frost and let's see how it's working so i'm sure we'll need more particles but let's have a look yeah maybe not uh, yeah it's okay like this so let's unhide the hide the frost you can download this brain base mesh on this video description and now let's create some lines to fill those gaps here spline is line and here on the snaps let's just make sure you check the face and check the snap now let's click here and here try not to click on the brain and 
here and here. Just remember that the the points will be created, the mesh will be created on the vertex point. So I'm trying to create some curved lines here that I know that there is some vertex on the in-betweens. You know, in this very small holes here, you can keep it like this and just keep the base mesh with the same uh, material of the brain and it will fill the holes. But those bigger ones is fine too. It's better to fill with a proper mesh. So I think it's okay like this. Let's cancel it. And here in the brain, I will edit here all of the lines. Hmm. It's okay, let's add some more lines just here. I think it's okay like this. Great. Now you can convert your brain to editable poly and put the the pivot on its center. And here on the just press six to open the particle view and you can switch off this particle flow source. Let's just call this one this brain base event just keep this here because you might want to change something later maybe so now we have the brain base on the second part of this tutorial we'll see how to create some veins also using particle flow and frost uh, thanks for watching bye